Hello kids. So right now, I am starting the part 4 of the lecture which we have always started within the 3 parts. The part 1, part 2 and part 3. The part first one was depending on the basic introduction about the Indian heritage, culture and system. Furthermore, we went on the part 2 in which we studied about the relativity of the Indian culture with the mythology and its mythological belief furthermore developed in some kinds of great aspect of the class who and some development regarding the new formation, information and new creativity according to their god, goddesses, language, thought, religion, aspect and many more things here. Therefore further, we started the part uh, third and now we are going on the part fourth here. You can understand here, the cultural heritage I explained you earlier in the lecture, cultural heritage of India, Indian heritage, okay? Furthermore, heritage of Gujarat, that is inscriptions related to Asoka and then tourist places of Jain and Buddhist also. Now, yesterday we discussed about the Tirthankars. Now if you go on further, which kind of category is the Tirthankar belonging to? I explained in the early lecture but I am just taking a recap before starting the main portion of today's lecture. Tirthankar means the place where especially a caste from Jainism, a con from Jainism can go and visit their pilgrimage places. The place is related to their god and goddesses. And it is somehow only related with their god. So, getting more further here, today the lecture is depending on <coughs> India, land and people. Now, what about the tourist places here? I described you yesterday about the tourist places from 1 to 18, 20, more apart from that. Among them, I described around 1 to 12 of the tourist places here. The rest of you can see it is given on the text page. Now, the tourist places refers not only with the mythology and the tourism. It also refers with the development of a country economically, ethically and on the view of religious aspect also. As you know that India stands with the diversified people and their habitat zone as well their food, lifestyle and many more things there. So therefore tourism, tourist places are playing a vital role, important role to flourish that kind of and carry the kind of cultural aspect, religious belief, hope, trust, faith upon their god and goddesses furthermore till today's century. So therefore, now we are moving to the India's land, people and lifestyle of the people here. Now in this case we can say that primitive man came. Now what the primitive man did, they started to survive and after the surviving, they started to develop their surviving days. How and in which condition we means they can be developing their livelihood. In that meanwhile, something new started, technical reform since from the 19th century started. This is a very recent century. But if you go more than to the civilization of the study, as per the Mark Twain, Mark Twain said that the cradle of culture, the cradle of culture has swing basically in India. Yani ki sanskaro ka palna jo tha, wo basically Bharat se hi aaya tha. And in this case and category, we can understand that India still and India will be going on a great level while referring, while representing the culture of India, the culture of our nation. So, the primitive man came to survive in the existence and therefore, the primitive man also started to do better things here. Now, who were the primitive men? We were, our ancestors were the primitive men. Existing simultaneously in India and eastern southern part of the India, that is somehow eastern part of the world also, African side, and mesmerized by the wide and heritage of the prosperous culture of many uh, by the foreign tribute uh, tribes of the people, they came to India, consequences and remains and which are found here. Everything made this culture, this uh, this whole region to survive and also to get a better development by the help of tourism. Today in the century I can say that tourism is not only the one thing which I am reading here in this lecture. The main thing is that why the people came in India, what was their basic wish to come here, what was their basic aspect to come here. The main thing is that they came here just because they were knowing the culture of India is more apart what they know. Therefore they came here. Now to go on further, more than six tribes came in India. 
but the basic, the first which we know is the Dravidian. Now, who were the Dravidians? From where they came? According to the <coughs> according to the survey, we can say that the Dravidians came from central China. And if we go more further, in which part of India now also they can be seen? I can say that the people were speaking Tamil, Telugu, Kannad, Malayal, Malayal, and many apart these kinds of languages. They can be referred as the Dravidian people. So. Dravidians started to live in India and furthermore we can say that Dravidian not only they came alone in India along with Dravidian other six tribe kings came that is like Aryans, Huns, Dana, <coughs> Skidyas and many more tribes came there Negroids, you can find many Negroids in the Gujarat also they are not African people but some of them are looking like African people straight away far from the Panch Man to the Gir Gujarat where you can say that Maybe there is possibilities. There is possibilities that their descendants or their forefathers may have been belonging to the Africans, East Africa or the southern part of Africa. So this is the thing which I am telling you that how the India land people started developing here. Therefore, here the ancient people of India, if you talk about, uh, they were developing. But the modern research have also uh, stated that linguistic and Anthropology also says that they have proved even before that Dravidians came, as I said, six more tribe came here in India here. Let's read about the basic six tribes here. So the first tribe which we are, which we are gonna describe here is the Negroids. Now, some historians say that uh, Negroids of the people or the Negroids of the caste who are also known as the uh, Negroids people are the most ancient people of the linguistic uh, belief if you talk about and uh, somehow they can uh, they can be relating with the Africa. They came from Africa. But a simple si baat hai, agar kisi ke baal, thik hai, uske naak, uska nose, lips, skin color, body, height, weight, uh, eye shape, everything if you are defining in your term, you can find out that this boy or girl is belonging to which kind of descendants, in which kind of family they might have uh, been carrying out their gene, their DNA. So therefore we can say that Negroid is the first type among the six other tribes which I am discussing here more. And getting further, we can say that they came from Africa. Now, not only from the Africa, they came from Africa via Baluchistan. As you know that Baluchistan is a very good part of that. Uh, before Dravidian came here. So therefore, uh, somehow it is said that Dravidian came first here. But it is not a the line between Dravidian came or the other tribe came is very very faint becoming why when we understand the fact that which caste came further, which tribe came further, there is a very less boundary line here. So we can take Negroid as the first here. Now, what we can understand, they were black in the color. The height of these people, of uh, the uh, Negroid people, were 4 to 5 inches, uh, 4 to, sorry, 4 to 5 feet, and curly hair. Now you can see my hair is somehow smooth, and not that much smooth, but somehow they were having a proper curly hair. You might have seen the cricketers, you know, in our Indian team of the cricketers also, some of the players are there, they are long, I mean, 6 to 7, uh, somehow 7.9 or 6.10 for some of the height. They are somehow related to these kinds of families, but in India, if we talk about the people who came in India, they were properly from the Negroids family. Moving to the second one, Austroids. Now, who were the Austroids people? Yani, he gets that Nisha. Nishad people, if you go more further, then these people of the tribe came from southeast part of the uh, <coughs> Eastern Africa, uh, sorry, Eastern Asia. And therefore, here they were the people who were also having a different thought of belief. They go, Harikas, Harik tribe, mein kuch kya hota hai? they have been different, different mentality, thought, and different, different kinds of uh, their life uh, holding activities also. In this case, we can say that. Eating style, leaving style, dwelling style, and then the language style, get up style, everything is changing here. So, in the case, we can say their physical features were also somehow like Negroids people. Yani, if you go more further, the physical features of the Negroids were uh, uh, this Austroids, Yani, Kini Shah people, uh, black in the skin color, and same as broad with the head, flat with the nose. Most of the most of the nose is flat with the short height, and therefore. The Aryan who came later from these people of India, they were also called the Nishad's people. So the origins of this tribe like Kol, Munda and Khasi tribes from Assam are also related to this kind of Nishad family of people. Let's get more further. See, here I am explaining you that India, land and people, how they relate to each other, from where they came, how many other castes, 
how many other tribe, how many other kinds of systematic people, development and their lifestyle came in India here. So this is the basic thing starting from the Africa to the Assam, India, Bengal, Bihar, Gujarat, everything will cover in this lecture here. Now, Austroids, yani they contributed in the development of Indian culture. Obviously, we all are developing in the Indian culture, obviously. But what if, if I say that some of the basic castes were more helpful in that, they were more helpful in developing this kinds of culture. It is the basic pro thing which we need to or which we gonna understand. Therefore, they were the development of this kinds of civilization and they also contributed in this civilization to go on an immense level okay, of the Indian culture. They also made clay evidences. clay We find uh, what? We find pitcher. Okay, pitcher P A E C H E. That is matka. It's it's not a pot. They go pot lag hota hai, matka lag hota hai, na? Generally matka ko hum log pot bolte hain, but it is actually different thing. Matka yani usko bolte hain pitcher and pot means the gamla. Yani usko vase bhi bolte hain. And if you go more in the Latin American, we can say vase. Spelling hota hai same, just the pronunciation is same. Uh, the pronunciation is changing. So in this case here, they started to develop the weapons also and more apart from the weapons, they started to develop the clay utensils. Now, apart from the clay utensils, they also made cotton clothes. Okay? We are wearing a light green shirt, so this is also made by the cotton clothes. So they also made the cotton clothes and if you go more further, they knew many of the skills as they generated slowly, slowly their lifestyle. As they started their lifestyle. So, they had a great religious belief also. A belief in what that? Worshipping to the God and gods, Worshipping to the animal and plants. Worshipping to the mountain and river. Worshipping to the every natural thing. Man-made thing also somehow. Shivling is not a natural thing. But we can say most of it is man-made thing only. Idol worshipping is also man-made thing. But we are worshipping to this culture. I have to You can ask by that from where the six caste came from where this culture came, why we worship trees as our sages, mountain as the father, river compared to the mother here. So that is the basic fact which we need to understand that these kinds of people started to survive here with the religious aspect which we are dealing with today's lifestyle. And therefore, the main the topic which I'm gonna read here is Dravidian. Let's talk about the Dravidian. Now who were they? Ye kaun the kaun se the? Let me start it out here. Basic scale hai. Tayari kar diye start ki. So pehla jo tha basically that I made to understand about the Nigroids. Then came the Nishad people, and now we're going to the Dravidian family. Now students, Dravidian only Dravidians belong to India if you talk about, but they also came from the central part of the China. Now therefore, there were different descendants of the Stone Ages. Now what is the Stone Age? <coughs> A simple belief is that Stone Age means what basically? We can understand Stone Age means the age in which the weapon, everything started to develop by the handmade thing, by the man-made thing. We started to make stone weapons, we started to make stone utensils, we started to make stone all the inscriptions and also we started to describe our lifestyle on the stone. Therefore, stone is playing a very important role in our development of the culture. And in this case, we can say that the stone age started developing, they were di direct descendants of the stone age civilization of the creators here. Now, who were the creators of the stone age civilization? They belong directly to the Mohan Judaros. You know that basically Mohan Judaro culture. The tribe which came from the northern part of the India and <laughs> survived with the language, culture, features. Language, culture, feature. Bhasha, okay, Sanskriti, or okay, Niya Manusha. Basically, language, culture, features, and furthermore, later on, they were only called the Dravidians only. So, somehow, we can say that the language, culture, and features started to develop here. Dravidian gave the aspect of belief. Okay, now, Dravidians, we talk about the <laughs> Dravidians, they gave the cultural belief. Now, what was the cultural belief? Here, I would like to say that. Dravidian gave that the concept of mother and father to the God here. Now, father as God, mother as God is why? Because as we respect our parents, I, I described this thing in the, my earlier lecture part third that how we actually believe in our father and mother same as we believe in the trees, mountain, river and we don't hurt our parents, we don't you know, hurt this kinds of thing also. So that is the basic fact here and if you go more further, they gave the thought of uh, Shankar and Parvati to here. Now who were they? Mythological character of our theory. Now, 
we cannot prove that there is no essence of God. Yeah, and we cannot prove that there is essence of God. There is a very faint line. Once again, there is a very mesmerizing words. There are many mesmerizing words used in this theory here. Sometimes you can say that yes, there is God, and sometimes you can say that there is no God here. So if you wish there is God, if you don't wish there is nothing that you can find like the spiritual thing of the God here. Moving further, you can say that. As they went further, so the thought of Parvati and Shiva as the mother and father started to develop here, and more of a tradition of worshiping nature as a gift of Dravidian can be also seen here. The tradition of worshiping of Dhub, Deep and Akrabati is also started here. So in the morning, today, what we are, you know, we are worshiping God. They make much simple system as well. If you worship your God, if you worship your Allah, if you worship your Jesus, I don't know what God is doing. Look, it's a simple thing. So you will say, then why are you worshiping? It's a straight fact that if you worship Jesus, you don't worship Jesus. आप जीसस को वर्षित नहीं कर रहे हैं, आप उनके थॉट को वर्षित कर रहे हैं। What he said? He said that there is always a forgiveness in the sin. This is the fact which I am telling you. It means that there is no revenge. अगर कोई बुरा कर रहा है हमारे साथ, तो उसके लिए आप माफी मांगो उसके खुद के लिए, not to cause him. ये आप थॉट एक्चुअली भी यूज़ करते हो। If you worship in Islam, if you worship Allah, okay, what he says that? He didn't say that you come daily and worship me, but he says that if you worship me, you all should live together. This is the basic fact here. And if you worship Sri Krishna as a Hindu, what he said that Sri Krishna को worship कर रहे हो तो आप actually Krishna को worship नहीं कर रहे हो आप उनके thoughts को worship कर रहे हो because उन्होंने कहा था don't worry about what is happening with you. It's all a part of life according to Gita. This is the worshiping thing here. So ये सब concept आए कहाँ से? ये सारे concept आए from our Dravidian civilization. And that's only what I'm actually teaching you in my this basic lecture. So students, going further, we can say that Dhub, Deep, Agrabati, Lamp and Aarti started to develop here and therefore the gift of Dravidian became more, more useful. Nowadays also, we are using this gift as a cultural aspect in our daily routine, in our life routine. And furthermore, besides the nature and animal worshipping also started here. Now, if we don't do animal worshipping, one thing is simple. Today we are saying that save cow, save buffalo, save birds, save rabbits, save dogs. We are saying that. If we don't have to eat all of them, then we are going to eat all of them. It's very simple. So we can say that worshipping is not to worship the God. Actually, we are worshipping His thought. What did they say? If you are Muslim, you will say that our Allah has said this, we have given this command. If I am a Hindu, I will say that Krishna has said this in the Ramayana Gita. So actually, we follow their thought. If you are Krishna, you will say that Jesus has said this, if you are bad, then you will say that Muslim is wrong. Forgiveness is the best thing which you can give to your enemy. It's not the revenge. But you need to take it out. You have to difference there. So actually, you worship the thought. And this all thing came from the thought of Dravidian civilization. And therefore, we are leading a united India. Yes, unity in the India because it is said that united we stand and divided we fall. If we are together, we can stand. And we can stand together. And that is how the Vedic civilization is dealing with here. So getting further, besides the nature and animal worshipping, there are also great features oriented from the Dravidians here. When I tell you something, you can see that basically, so Dravidians have also accepted Aryans which were re-established and which Aryans ke bhi samaj jikta to se families and all Dravidians related kar rahe and therefore this culture was deeply and immense with each other, interacted with each other and internalized by the Dravidians. Hence we can say that the inter-caste marriages took place here. Now what is inter-caste marriage basically? According to the text, what you can write in the inter-caste marriage. Well, two people with a different caste mythology thought they started to mingle together. They were somehow known as the <coughs> inter-caste marriages. Now, if you go more further, Dravidian has a marital understanding also. System for the family. Marriage, relation, then furthermore your family will be increasing. You are actually building your own uh, nuclear uh, family, we can say that. A family which is somehow relating with each other, a joint family. Because in the ancient time, there were no any kind of family relations and many more things. If you go through with the deep culture of early human man or early man, or uh, we can say that if you go from the deep culture of the like uh, forefathers and all, you marriage systems many different. Now start This started straight away from the Greek Athens, okay? And if you go over further, before 2000 civilization, 
अगर हमने देखा जाए तो बिफोर लगभग दो हजार ईसा पूर्व के पहले के स्टार्ट हुआ था ना वॉट वॉज रीजन बिहाइंड द मैरिज इट वॉज ओनली टू हैंडल द प्रॉपर्टी Because you will get the hair. Hair means you will get a kid after that, and then will handle your property which you have earned by giving your life, and you will also take your name further. So that was the general basic thing here. अब अगर हम बात करें थोड़ा फीमेल इसके तो basically 18वीं सदी के बाद यानी कि in the end of 18th century, 18th century, women started to getting the first opportunity to be equal to men after getting the opportunity of voting. ये बहुत latest की बात है. अट्ठारवी सदी के बाद औरतों तो को हक दिया गया उनको वोट करने का अधिकार है उसके पहले नहीं था इट मीन दैट वीवर है डुबल स्टैंडर्ड सिस्टम मैन टू द अपर लेवल एंड द फीमेल टू द लोअर लेवल एंड दिस वाज रॉन्ग थॉट देखो अगर हम कुछ ऐसे लोगों की बात करें जैसे राजा राम मोहन रॉय जो हाँ इन लोगों ने इसके लिए लड़ाई भी की दे ऑल्सो फॉर देयर फॉर देयर रिस्पेक्टिव बिलीव दैट गर्ल्स आर इक्वल टू बॉयज एंड नाउ इन द ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट सेंचुरी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी दिस इज टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वी कैन से दैट एवरी बडी इज इक्वल एंड दे ऑल हैव रिस्पेक्ट दे ऑल हैव देयर ओन राइट ह्यूमनिटी प्रिंसिपल ड्यूटीज रेगुलेशन रूल्स टू लीव देयर लाइफ हेयर एंड टू चूज द गवर्नमेंट ऑल्सो सो एम गोइंग ओन द डिटेल अबाउट द मैरिज सेरेमनीज एंड मेनी मोर थिंग्स हेयर But apart from that, we can say that this is the basic thing which I am actually needing to tell you here. Now, Aryan culture was deeply influenced by the uh, some of the Vedians family, as I said, you with a different art skill, and they also made uh, different artistic things also, like building, boat, and uh, we can say that uh, many more things like uh, <coughs> raft also, weaving, spinning machines, uh, dyeing, etc. Dyeing means what? The clothes. painting and many more things also okay so due to the domains of the aryans domains of the aryan ki there is some aryan ka ek some ek you can say rule effect as basically aryans they shifted to south india abhi aapko kahan dikhenge the british as i said tamil telugu malayalam kannad okay yani ki south indian people main aapko dravidian ka pura pura effect dikhega because they actually are belong to the dravidian caste of the family So now they shifted to South India, settled there, and as a result, today we can say that the people of India, of the Dravidian family, speaking Dravidian language, can be seen only from the caste category and the people who are, you know, mean, uh, who are explain, who are telling, or who are speaking the language of Tamil, Telugu, Kannada, Malayalam, and etc. So this is all a detailed lecture about the Dravidian family, Dravidian, some of only the family, all of the Dravidian lifestyle. all of the dravidian civilization all of the dravidian race of the people from where they came so these lecture is all about from the indian culture this are lecture also about how does this indian culture develop in which category in which condition in which theory in which thought it started to develop and hence we can say that other other not only dravidians aryans uh, this uh, austroites or nishat people came here other tribes also came i'll define them in a shorter gap of that okay so the first thing we can say that the other tribes came apart from that there were mongoloids okay they were alpai they were dinard they were amanoids okay and not only the amanoids they were also from their other zones of india who settled in india but we basically know the main six जनरल कास्ट ऑफ इंडिया ट्राइब्स ऑफ इंडिया नाउ इफ यू गो मोर फर्दर एक और टॉपिक में लेना चाहूंगा यहां पे मोंगलाइट्स कौन है ओके लेट्स सी इट आउट हियर नाउ इफ यू रीड अबाउट द्रविडियन इंडियनस एंड निशाद पीपल आर्यंस ना हु आर द मोंगलाइट्स लेट्स सी इट आउट हियर दे केम फ्रॉम द नॉर्दर्न चाइना बाय तिब्बत सेटल्ड डाउन इन द नॉर्दर्न आसाम आपने देखा होगा आसाम में जो ओके कजरंगा फॉरेस्ट नेशनल पार्क इज देयर दिस केम फ्रॉम द चाइना नॉर्दर्न चाइना Uh, from the pass of Tibet, okay, Tibet Pass, and they settled in Assam, Sikkim, Bhutan. Some people can be seen in the West Bengal also. Now they gradually Indianize themselves. Now don't think of Indianizing to become Indian, to marry with Indian girls, and to raise their family more further apart from their general lifestyle to the pro. And therefore, they also somehow were Mongolite people who possessed. the physical characters like yellow complexion not the skin color skin color you can say that there is a some of yellow complexion there are no dark they are not in a dark shape like the dark color of the skin like the african people or the other people they are in some of the yellow complexion okay apart from that their faces were flat the cheeks were chubby hai na you might have a junior senior point padha hoga aapne 
चब बेचिंग रोजेलिप्स एंड ऑल तो वैसा ही था कुछ बेसिकली वी कैन से दैट देवर वन इज द चब बेचिंग्स एंड द फ्लैट नोज नोज थोड़े बड़े होते थे और आंखें आपने वो चाइनीज की देखी होगी सम ऑल लाइक दिस जंगस खान वाले तो सेम एज दैट ओनली दे माइट बी हैविंग दिस दे आर हैविंग दिस काइंड ऑफ फेसेस एंड द फेसेस वी कैन से मोर अबाउट फ्रॉम दैट आलमंड शेप आईज आल्सो एक्सेट्रा एंड एक्सेट्रा सो सम ऑल दे हैविंग द येलो कॉम्प्लेक्शन मंगोलियंस वर आल्सो नोन एज द कीरेट पीपल ओके तो अगर हम बात करते हैं मंगोलियंस की तो दे आल्सो नोन एज द कीरेट पीपल आई आर इट कीरेट पीपल ओके दिस इज आर so this is the basic thing which i'm explaining to you that other other tribes came they go all the tribes came central uh, uh, forming the human body only they were more like the god's body okay all the were human body but the different thing was that their character somehow the language food lifestyle dwelling okay a uh, fair festival the ritual ceremonies and their you know, whatever the mythology they they came from and the basic thing they were having a different physical shape of a fish also अलग अलग फिजिकली वो दिखते थे सो दिस इज द फैक्ट विच आई एम टेलिंग यू अबाउट द रिलियन सिविलाइजेशन अबाउट द मोगोलाइट सिविलाइजेशन अबाउट द निशाद एंड अबाउट द मेनी अदर सिविलाइजेशन सो माय डियर किड्स दिस वाज द लेक्चर पार्ट 4 एंड वी विल बी गोइंग मोर फर्दर इन द अदर पार्ट अबाउट द लेक्चर सो दैट वी कैन कंप्लीट दिस सिलेबस वेरी वेल सून एंड यू कैन रेफर द टेक्स्ट बुक आल्सो एज आई एम रीडिंग इन दिस वीडियो आई एम टेलिंग यू सम डिटेल fact wise you can also see through your textbook you can also see uh, on the pages of the textbook while reading the lines and you can get your details quite clear here so this is the lecture part 4 and we will be meeting in the part 5 with the other basic thing here and you will complete it the india land and people okay is it clear okay so take care